HIV is a great story of medical progress. We've gone from having a disease that was rapidly fatal in young people to one that is treatable in virtually everyone. People with HIV can now lead a normal life and a long life. Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Sachs, Clinical Director of the Division of Infectious Diseases at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. And this is Clues to Cures. I'm going to tell the story of progress in HIV treatment, which has been really remarkable. HIV, which stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, is the cause of AIDS. And AIDS became the leading cause of death among young Americans by the early 1990s, which is when I started working on the condition. So let's now talk about the history of HIV. Let's start in June of 1981. That's when we saw the first cases of HIV described in five gay men from Los Angeles. It was published in the MMWR, which is the CDC's journal. It was pre-internet. And notice that they put the report on page two. And this was because it discussed explicitly homosexuality, which was a very taboo topic at the time. The first advance in HIV really was discovery of the virus, which was by scientists in France in 1983. This allowed us to develop a very accurate test for HIV to protect the blood supply and so that people could find out if they had the virus. If we move forward to 1992, which is when I became an infectious disease specialist, HIV had become the leading cause of death among young adults in the United States. This led to a heartbreaking and tragic loss of life of young people all around the country and around the world. Everything changed in 1996. At the Vancouver International AIDS Conference, we heard about treatments that could suppress replication of HIV in people taking combination therapies. We now had enough medications to treat the virus and to keep it from rebounding and coming back. This was like a light going on in a dark room. Deaths from AIDS plummeted around the United States. We didn't have a cure, but we had the next best thing. We had a treatment. Antiretroviral therapy, or ART, became standard of care for HIV treatment. Suppression of the virus with no replication meant that there was no resistance and this treatment would last. The virologists and the clinicians were all so excited to see this and our patients were thrilled that they could now lead normal lives. However, globally, there was a disaster unfolding, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, where there was an explosion of cases of AIDS and no available treatments. The 2000 International AIDS Conference in Durban, South Africa, served as a wake-up call that these people needed treatments as much as people in richer countries. Fortunately, the treatments work just as well in developing countries as they do in richer countries, and they have saved millions of lives. Today, remarkably, people with HIV can lead as long and as healthy lives as people without HIV. This kind of progress is just extraordinary, and I still have to pinch myself sometimes to think back to those days in the early 1990s when it was causing so much death and devastation. An added benefit of HIV treatment is that it makes people non-contagious to others, which means that people on therapy cannot pass the virus on to their loved ones. Despite this remarkable progress, there are still some problems in HIV that have not been solved and research teams at Mass General Brigham are working on them right now. We still do not have a cure for HIV. When people stop the treatment, it, the virus comes back and the disease progresses. In addition, we still don't have a vaccine for HIV, even though it was predicted to come in 1984, 1985. Finally, we're all working to reduce the stigma associated with HIV. Even though things are much better than they were in the 1980s and 90s, it remains a big problem and one that we're trying to overcome. It's very exciting that we've come so far in HIV research, and I've been privileged to be part of it. In addition, I'm hopeful that some of the research that's been done in COVID-19, in particular with vaccines, will help us advance the cause of an HIV vaccine as well. We've come so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing progress that we make in the near future. Thanks for watching, and click here to watch more Clues to Cures videos from Mass General Brigham.